Close your eyes. Silent invocation, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We are here to have a preliminary discussion on the uh, uh, budget as we move forward. Uh, just want to keep some things in mind. Uh, this is a preliminary conversation. We're going to be discussing uh, several aspects of the general fund. Uh, give a chance for opening comments for council here in a second. But we want to take a look at where we are as, as uh, maintaining the status quo. And if there are any... What? You want me to call roll? You sure? Okay. Robin says I have to call uh, have a roll call, so why don't you call the roll? Council Ford? Here. Councilman Tremont? Here. Councilman Bastion? Here. Vice Mayor Stiltner? Here. Mayor Burnett? Here. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, now I gotta do that all over again. <laughs> uh, let's start with opening comments. So keeping in mind that uh, we're establishing a framework, uh, what it's gonna cost us to maintain the status quo, where we're gonna be at, and then gentlemen, if there are any initiatives, anything that we need to improve on. Anything you don't like, throw it out tonight because we have time to talk about it and uh, staff will have time to work on it. And that's the idea of getting a jump on this thing. Scott, let's start with you. I'll keep my, my opening comments pretty brief. I'm just I'm glad that we're getting started now and uh, I want to try to work through things as early as possible through the through the year so things don't get piled up all at the end and we feel like we're under a time crunch to, to, to make a lot of uh, decisions in a very short amount of time. So. I'd like to be moving forward quickly and early. Um, I would just also encourage all of us to really keep in mind the, uh, the vision of our city moving forward. I know that um, this council has been very, very active in the past year, being out in the community, being involved with the community in a lot of different ways. And so I think we need to be taking all of that into consideration <clears throat> as we uh, paint the picture for next year and, and the future years of the city. Uh, we've definitely got some some challenges that may be on the horizon that I think will be in the backs of all of our minds moving forward in the, in the coming years. So, looking forward to, uh, to working through all this with you guys. Uh, yeah, and Scott, I think Scott's right about the vision. But one of the things that makes this year different than some previous years is we're facing a great deal of fiscal uncertainty with the uh, Homestead exemption uh, basically vote uh, on the state ballot, um, which could impact us in the area of 800 between 800,000 1.2 million. Uh, so that's something we have to take into effect, into account as we work this year. Second thing we have to take into account is the half cent sales tax. However, that's going to be very difficult because with the recent legislation coming out of of uh, <clears throat> Tallahassee, it's very hard to assess whether, in fact, it will even be on the ballot never, never uh, this year or uh, whether it will pass. So that is uncertainty usually uh, moves. For me, it's going to be a conservative year, or we might call it a preservation year, where I want to preserve what we have right now. Uh, the city is working well. I want to make sure uh, that we preserve our current efforts uh, and that we pass a budget uh, that if uh, things occur poorly in the future, if things don't go right, we'll be able to preserve the jobs and people we now have in the programs. So I'm, I'm interested in what we call for preservative uh, to protect us moving forward. Uh, and in the future, when things look brighter, money becomes more available, and then we can consider some of the wonderful things we've talked about. Chase? Yeah, uh, good comments. Uh, I appreciate the comments uh, Councilman Stover and the board made. I express um, similar concerns uh, that uh, Dr. Bob made a reference. You know, my, 
my tune's always going to be the same. I'm going to live within our means. Um, you know, we, uh, two years ago, 7.3% increase, I believe. Last year, we had a 6.9% increase. And last year, we also raised the stormwater fee 15%. Uh, we're looking at a possible ta sales tax increase as well. So at what point does it, uh, at any level of government say, you know, enough is enough. Um, let's, uh, let's give uh, folks a break. Uh, so we here at Port Orange, I'm, we're fortunate to live in the um, <clears throat> in one of the, the least uh, least taxed uh, city in the county. I want to continue to maintain that um, at the rate of continuing to tax ourselves. Um, it's hard enough getting kids uh, to move back here after the graduate. Um, I don't want to make it too expensive for them to live here when we do have an opportunity uh, for that to happen. So uh, I'm interested in protecting the laws. Of, um, of people in Portland. So uh, at the same time, uh, not um, not impacting our quality of life and doing what we need uh, to do uh, to get it done. I'm not interested in saving a buck uh, to uh, uh, at, the, uh, at the risk of impacting uh, our community and living quality. So uh, we need to spend something, we need to spend something. Uh, looking forward to hearing what the departments uh, have requested. Uh, come to the members. Sure. Yeah, I agree with a lot of what's been said, but um, several years ago, eight, nine, ten years ago, whenever it was, there were a lot of cuts and financial problems and, and all this, and we've come back pretty pretty good from that. And uh, we're in a position now where we're providing a lot of great services, and, and I'm not going to, to take away from those services. Um, people that live here come to expect a lot, they demand a lot. Um, we are one of the lower millage rates. The other cities are, are much higher in most instances. And uh, that, you know, I don't think that they're uh, providing the services we are. You know, that, that we're the bang for the buck, if you will. So uh, I'm going to uh, look forward to uh, some good conversation here, seeing what everybody has to offer, and, uh, and, and go from there, see what we uh, come up with. A lot of good comments. I, I've got to say that, first and foremost, there's, I think that there's a quality of life uh, element to all of this. And we start with doing a needs assessment today. Uh, I really am not looking to go backwards on anything, especially when we start with public safety, because there are, uh, there are budget communities that, uh, here on East Volusia. And if you're, uh, if you're looking at living on the cheap, uh, and, and because you, you're that lean, and you're not interested in high-level uh, services from uh, public safety, parks and rec, and the like, then uh, Port Orange is probably not your cup of tea. Uh, I also have to uh, comment that when we have done these larger increases the last couple of years, it's the homeowners that are not paying the, the lion's share of it. And when we increase tax at 7.9 percent, the homeowner that really means the homeowners are hitting getting hit about two and a half percent. And we're slamming it to uh, businesses and second homeowners and, and non homesteaded properties uh, to the tune of much higher than the 7.9 because how that works out, and we're, we're probably in the double digits. So we have to be conscious of what it does and how it impacts our businesses because these businesses are here um, and, and they, our citizens want them here. Otherwise, they wouldn't be here and um, they serve our citizenry. So we uh, keep all that in mind as we go along. With that, Jake, what you got for us? Good evening, Mayor Council. Uh, tonight we're going to start off with a uh, revenue projection. Uh, Tracy's going to go through the uh, projected revenue sources, at least 80% of them, the, the, the ones with the biggest bang for the buck. Uh, there are a few outliers out there, a few items that uh, we didn't capture, but they're very minor in the scheme of things. We won't change the uh, end result by a, uh, a big amount. Um, and then we're going to show you, uh, as, as we talked about, what it's going to take to turn the page. If we kept this budget, didn't add anything, uh, save a janitor for the new annex and one police officer. Uh, I added those in based on a conversation we had last year during the budget season uh, that, say, that, that said, you know, one year is probably uh, something palatable. So I added it in 
it can always be taken out. But in this budget, as they turn the page, that projection includes those two personnel because I believe those are things you can't live without uh, uh, starting off. Um, and then we'll get into uh, a little bit of, of what we've talked about. The, the staff is in the throes of, of uh, being briefed on CIP budget right now. I've heard but all but two, maybe one department now, and I've made no uh, sweeping moves to change anything. So what you'll see is a, a priority list uh, from departments, uh, not necessarily a priority list as, as I see it, but as they see it, with the essential must-dos and the, uh, the should-dos, um, and, and the cost of those. Uh, you'll, I think you'll quickly see that we can't afford everything. As, as we're well aware right now on the staff. So um, I'm short of council making a, a sweeping decision like they did a couple of years ago to allocate over $2 million. So uh, we're not there. Um, so that's what you're going to hear from Tracy. And then, then we'd like to discuss uh, a little bit about where, where you'd like to go, uh, where you'd like to stay. Uh, but kind of like last year, we want to show you what, what it would cost just to keep doing what we're doing. So. Okay, Tracy. Yeah. So again, I'd like to reiterate the fact that this is extremely preliminary. This is April. Can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. A little louder. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's very preliminary. This is April. We do not have estimates yet from the property appraiser. So some of this is extremely high level at this point. Um, so we're going to look at the top 10 revenue lines that generate about 80% of the revenue coming into the general fund. Um, we're going to take a look at what it would cost to turn the pages and then um, some CIP items that are under discussion. So the first uh, two are state revenue sharing items. The top line there that is uh, sort of orange is the current half cent sales tax that we have here. And the bottom line is the state revenue sharing that the state sends to us each year. You can look at those trends and see if it, all of these slides really give you a 10-year history. And we're basically just forecasting based upon the past five years of growth that we've seen. We don't have numbers yet from the state on any of these. They send it to us around July. Um, other taxes and fees. Um, this is another area that, so the, the state ones are really out of our control as well as not many on this page. This is primarily driven by, you know, FPL, primary driver. So you can see that the uh, sort of reddish line is um, the utility service tax, excuse me, the bluish line, the top line, is the utility service tax that comes from FPL. Um, you've got your Next line down, which is the FPL franchise fee. So those are the two largest drivers. They're both going up. We've got decreasing communication service taxes. I believe I've mentioned that too over the years. It's been decreasing since 2010. And the very bottom line is the utility service tax on the water that is under council's control that is driven pretty much by the water sales. These are internal service transfers over the past 10 years. The um, blue line is the administrative service fees. That's based on a percent of the expenditures. So we look at the CAFR every year, see the departments. Um, these are departments that are not general fund departments, how large they are. And they basically are paying the general fund for the services that they receive from us. And the bottom line is the payment in lieu of taxes. That's just the water sewer line, because that's, again, the largest item there. It's based upon the amount of assets that they have. So these models are run every year, and they're basically, we're projecting very similar to where we are currently. Over the past, we've used equity, and uh, so this is basically our savings in a variety of ways. You can see the spikes um, in recent years that council's appropriated to some of our larger capital projects. Um, I can go through them if you like, but just this past year, uh, we had a 1.149, that's in 2018 for River Walk and the and the gym floors and those types of items, as well as a transfer into the 505 lease and replacement fund to supplement that. And this is your history of ad valorem. This is obviously not the rate that you've charged, but rather 
the amount of revenue that the city has received in each of the years over the past 10 years. So um, we're projecting for the new year as, as we've gone into this, we've kept the ad valorem rate the same as we currently have. So that's the 4.4881. And then we have projected an increase, a 3% increase on existing properties. So that's in line with the, the cap for homestead exemptions. And then also an increase of the past couple of years has been 7%. So we put a 7.2% increase on growth. Again, we don't have any information from the property appraiser, but indications are that we're doing as well as we did last year. So that's what we've done. Um, council has already talked about the um, homestead exemption that's due to come. Um, it will be voted on this November, which will take effect in um, fiscal 20. So it will not affect the current fiscal year, but there are planning items that might need to be considered in the current year. So I wanted to pause here and ask if there were any questions on those big items as we move forward. Did uh, I hear you correctly that you're expecting possible guesstimated 3% increase? Well, we figured those property pro value. properties that are homestead exempted are limited to a 3% increase. So we've taken our existing <coughs> stock and said 3% increase, but the, the growth portion of it, um, we figured we'll get the same amount of growth as we have in the past two years. That's for the going, this is just an assumption at this point. We'll see what we get when we get numbers from the property appraiser at the beginning of the year. What was that percentage you said? Seven. Seven point nine. Seven point two. Seven point two percent of growth and a three percent on existing properties. With the assumptions that we built into this discussion. They're very those are very global at this point, very early. And really, honestly, what we're looking at is what is it going to take to set a millage to adjust what we need. And so all those that were all those are moving numbers anyway. We're, we're, we're mill, millages don't pay the rent dollar signs do, so that's what we concentrate on at the end of the day. Are there any other questions on the other side of the house? We're still looking at for 20, and it's going to be about a 900000 to a million dollar hit expected if the home said mention additional or less tax. The projection of 1.2 is not. It's, it's come down a little bit um, as they reassess the values and they move it. They have, the latest one was north of 900, but less than a million. But then again, that's going to change over time they, sure. they reassess it. But it, nevertheless, it's substantial when the non avalon portion is 13 million. So a million <coughs> reduction to that is substantial. And it doesn't hit everybody equally because not everybody has a homestead no. exemption. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't. This is yeah. Right, so here is, again, very preliminary projections looking at what it would take to turn the page from September to October. So I'm going to walk you through some of these. So, so if you go back to the original budget, um, so you, that highlighted line, the current budget that we're in has uh, an amount of 36,507,289. So that's what we're going to be building our assumptions off of. That's where we are currently. So if we look at fiscal 19 and we, we take the fiscal 18 original budget and then we take out, we've got the appropriated equity, we have the one-time um, expenditures and then we have the miscellaneous, that brings us down to the 36,507. So moving forward, we would increase based upon the growth and based upon the property increase that we already talked about, that should net us about $518,000, those two items. We would, the anticipated utility service taxes, franchise fees, and state revenues sharing, and the current existing half cent sales tax would give us just under 600,000. So that's that second one down at the 598,512. We would decrease for the communication service taxes. You saw that line going down. So we're, we're breaking that out for you. At 78,323 would be the decrease. Now the next one is, is offset on the second slide by expense. If you remember in this year, in, the, in fiscal 17, um, 
we moved the pass through from the state of police and fire pension premium insurance premium tax mm -hmm. that they paid that we passed through. We moved it out of the budget and put it on the balance sheet. Well, when the auditors came, they said no, they prefer it to be back on the on the income statement. So we have to increase revenue and increase expenditures, but it's a pass through. But I'm showing it for you here so that you can see it, and it's offset by expense lower. Then we have the uh, Babe Ruth is is in, um, so we have that revenue, and. At, this point for turning the page, we are not funding any CIP or any transfers. So you don't see transfers from the 317, the general capital fund, or the 505 lease and replacement fund at this point. So that brings us to 37, 147, 9, 10. And then this is how it's looking that it would be expended. And this is, again, extremely high level. We do not have anything in from the departments. So that's basically holding the departments to what they have currently. Because no, department, no departments have entered anything into the system yet. Tracy, does it account for changes in the three new labor contracts? Yes, it does. Okay. I'll, I'll walk you through the changes that we've been able to incorporate in this. So we've got the original budget um, for personal services and original all others. So that's that 36507289 where we're sitting today in fiscal 18. So we are taking out the capital in the 18 budget of 100,000 and the transfers that we talked about earlier to the 317 and the 505. So we're taking those out, we're not funding them. So that decreases our budget. Now the next four items are some good news it nets to a total decrease of $6,000. So what we first did for, to, to outline this for council is if we took everybody that we have currently and we, at their current pension rates, and so this is the, the wage increases and the current pension rates, that would be an additional $540,000. And then the next three lines are what's happening in the pension. So the general employee's pension is increasing from 7.3 to 21.3, but since there's relatively few members in that, it's only a $68,000 increase. The really good news for us comes with the decrease that we're seeing in both public safety pensions. So both the police pension and the fire pension have gone down in their required contributions this year as a result of some of the stewardship and the decisions that council has, has made. So those are really saving us 238,000 for the fire and another 376, almost 377 for the police. So that basically is able to absorb the cost of the union negotiations that come to, into effect this year. So for all of our bargaining units, we're able to absorb that increase as a result of the better performance of the pensions. So it's very good news. That's a terrific move, especially considering in police and fire we were over at or near or over 100% five years ago. Yes, it's, uh, it's a substantial change, so I'm very happy about that. So now the next line you see is uh, the one new police officer. Obviously our police officers are not making that kind of a salary. That's a combination of a vehicle, so a new vehicle, um, and all of the equipment and the salary and pension and everything all rolled up into one. Obviously, the second year costs go down because 38,000 of that is for the vehicle alone. Um, <coughs> then you see here the state premium tax again that we just addressed earlier. So of course we have to we add it into revenue. We have to add it into expenditures. Um, here's the expenditures for Babe Ruth coming, and then the next line of 175,000. This is a very large guess um, for the additional mowing that's required for the beautification that we've had on the Ridgewood improvements and the Dunlop improvements. The original maintenance was included in the bid for, uh, for I know for Bridgewood and I believe for Dunlop as well, but they're going to be coming off of those contracts so the city's going to have to absorb that ongoing uh, maintenance. And so that's currently estimated at 175000 um, As council knows, we are going to be opening up the city hall annex. Um, that's going to have associated um, maintenance with it and it, you know, uh, a custodian is included in that. Um, the balance of that estimate was used taking the police department and what it pays and then basically using that as a, as a guideline on a square footage basis and applying it to the size of the annex. So like I say, very large guesses at this point. 
Um, but we will have to, you know, we're going to have to maintain that. I left the blank here because we have not included any increases for building or fleet maintenance at this time. Um, it's too early in the process, but it's likely that there will be an increase in, in those two internal service funds. Of course, the general fund is the biggest customer of those internal service funds, so much of that will flow into the general fund. Um, last year, we funded body armor and traffic boards for the police department out of a forfeiture fund. Of course, it's not that was sort of a one-time thing. We're going to be needing to move that back into its historic funding. Um, we've got our current fleet. Uh, we've got a schedule that we make every year so of our current fleet, and we know what those costs are in the first year, and we know what they are in the next year. So even if we didn't buy anything, we would have an increase to the fleet financing um, much of that comes when you buy something the first year, we only charge half a year for the replacement, but then, of course, the next year you have to annualize it. So that's the, the largest driver of that line. And finally, in the 2014 capital improvement bonds for the debt service, we are, this year we're not going to have equity for funding that. We have been funding some of that by using equity up in the past years. That's no longer an option, and that's going to increase it by a hefty 447000 that's a big, that's a big change there. So um, that basically outlines what it is to turn the page. The good news is, at turning the page, at least it's black at this point. So that's a very good thing. So, are there any questions on that? I know there's a lot of data there. I'm happy to. So this is you know. the status quo, year over year, with the you know, cost of the contracts and everything. Yes, the contracts are included in there. The the um, the, you know, the fleet and the stuff that we really know about. But this is basically to turn from September 30th to October 1st. And not accounting for any CIP priorities we might put in or anything like that. That's correct. So this is there's, there's just a raw budget. There's one police officer and one janitor in there. Gotcha. That's the only thing new that isn't contracted or, or already obligated by council. So just looking at that compared to our budget for last year, that's a $640,000, $621 increase, or a percentage increase year over year, just on the raw budget of only 1.8%, which quite frankly, with those three labor contracts, is a lot less than I was, uh, I was afraid it'd be much, much more. Okay. Could you email a copy of this to us tonight? Of course, of course, it was being worked on even today. So my apologies that we did not have it before this meeting. But we is wanted the, to use every opportunity to chase the numbers down. Is the janitor factor in the line 29? Is that where that's? Yes. Okay. Yes, the janitor is included in there. Um, and about about 184 of that is is just for the maintenance of that facility. That one? Yeah. Yeah. Like, we might be able to chase a little bit out because we have the non-departmental has been paid for the electric now, but we didn't have time to chase that down. It would be a little bit of good news. I'm sure there's other bad news that I haven't gotten to at this point. So it might be a little bit. It might be a little bit in there for the cost to carry without being used. You know. Tracy, as we move forward, if you if you can, I, I'd like for you to ask that you. Uh, give that particular position its own line, like you did for the uh, police officer. Okay. Just so that we can kind of distinguish the personnel it, costs it'll, versus. It'll, the, get, it'll get broken out yeah. as we move forward. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, it was, and, and it'll get more granular as we move forward. This was kind of just kind of way to top. Mm -hmm. At one point it was, it was a separate line, but there's so many lines there that it was hard to see. Oh, okay. So this was. <coughs> Yeah, this is, so, Mayor and Council, this is a, a great place to stop, um, um, uh, talk to us about the assumptions we made, uh, keeping in mind, and, and you've said and mentioned some of it, that, that we were chasing revenue figures in the uh, July, August, September of last year. They were, they were still, and, and even then, it's a is a guesstimate because you don't know what percentage of uh, uh, of the um, property tax you're going to get and when you're going to get it. I think if we're at 95 percent, mm -hmm. so so we, we ask for that, so we uh, anticipate 95 percent. Um, and 
And we open up to you all to, to kind of direct us on, we think we did a good job of, of, of estimating here, but if there's anything you'd like to see different, um, let us know any assumptions that we might have flawed, uh, uh, flawed thought process or something you want to add. Um, knowing that, that our 7% growth, <clears throat> if, you, if you do that anecdotal, you'd say, well, we're doing a lot more this year. Um, Maybe, maybe we are, but uh, uh, it's it's will we get to CO and will we start taxing? I, I, I don't know where we are. Because the residential and business mix might be different. It might be different. Those things make absolutely. Let's stop right here. Then comments, questions. So Scott, any? No, I just uh, Tracy can break out some of that stuff in more detail as we continue to move forward and and, and as we have these workshops and, and meetings, definitely. And I know Tracy, I'm not. I know it's a lot going on trying to get it all out, but having those those also for us to write notes right on as you talk through them, I know it would be beneficial for me uh, moving forward. Um, but like I we, we have, yeah. so we plan on this end of April beginning. I got you. But the people that everybody scheduled, it would have been June, so. Right. Um, Bob? Yeah. This is what I think council asked for, is basically uh, a turning the page budget to keep what we've got, what we have to do. And as I understand it, the only difference is basically we added a police officer and a community service officer. A police officer and a janitor. A janitor. And a janitor. There, there are a lot more requests I understand. out there, but that's the only one that's included in this estimate. And yeah, we trust our city manager will appropriately vet those before bringing them. Absolutely. Those. Absolutely. Okay. So this is what I wanted to see um, because it gives me a sense of what I need to do to preserve what we have. Chase? <clears throat> no, I agree. I, I would, uh, I'd like to have it to, to mark up the more information we have, the better decision makers would be. Um, I appreciate seeing this. Uh, this is good to see where, where we're starting from. Thank you, Jason. And Robin and all her efficiency has put this on our email. Guys, if you want to call it up on the screen, you can. We're on slide 11 if you call it up on your presentation. Drew? Uh, I don't have much. I think at this point in the process where we are, those are some good estimates. And that, I mean, you can have something to work off of. So. Um, for where we're at right now, I, I, I think it's good to kind of see where we're headed and it you know, could be more, could be less, and, and then we'll work it out from there. But, uh, you know, those numbers aren't uh, too or overly alarming at this point, and then we'll see where we end up. I, I agree, Drew. You, you got to know where we're starting before we have policy conversations. I know. We're definitely heading towards a policy conversation on plus one. Um, I you know, personally still feel like we haven't uh, done enough to get people to talk about it and hold the county responsible for that. But all the same, if we don't have the, the groundwork, we can't have those policy conversations to follow. Hey, if I can add one more thing. Jake, one of the things that I would also like to ask um, for you and your staff is I know over the years we've made some changes um, with regard to services provided in-house versus things that we contract out. And I'd like to ask for the departments to really take a look at that and let's make sure that we're still on good ground uh, in terms of the, the service and the quality of service we get for what we're paying and whether or not we can, can, can we uh, take some of those things and go outside and get better bang for the buck? Or can we get better bang for the buck by bringing them back in? Um, and we have, you yeah. and I have that little project with Lynn that, that it looms in the back of my head. Yeah, and so I'm going to look at those things, and, and maybe that is going to be, uh, you know, very pertinent to how the economy changes over you bet. time, you right? Bet. I mean, the economy's not doing good, private sector is willing to step in and do government contracts for really, really inexpensive right. costs when the economy's doing good and the private sector is flourishing with private projects. We see that very evidently. They don't even want to bid the projects. I mean, now a lot of times we get one and two or not, right. and they're in the cost that they're putting into those things and services. So I think we just need to kind of 
we're probably going to always be evaluating that. I get that. And in some, you know, long-term planning, I know that can be, have its complexities, but I do think it's something that we look at. Building maintenance actually would be one of those things. We probably do it better in, and more cost-effective in-house right now, but in, in, in years to come or, you know, as the economy ever flows, I don't know, maybe, maybe there are private contractual services. That's why I'd like to see that particular line. I'm just curious, what is that cost us? And, you know, and are there services out there that would do those things uh, in the private sector as a contract service? Um, our mowing and landscape services are for sure something that I think we need to take a really solid look at because I gotta be honest with you, I think in-house we could do it and save a lot of money and do a better job and have better oversight than, than what we're seeing lately. Now, if you go back six, eight years ago, maybe not. Maybe those private sectors were coming in. Six, eight years ago, it's not maybe not. Right. Six, eight years ago, it's no. Yeah. So, you know, anyway, so those are some things I think we need to have a discussion on and encourage departments to take a look. And, and right now, in this given moment, I can't think of all the different scenarios that are out there where we have private sector contracts, doing services, and things like that. But I think you can get one. Yeah. Every, so every time we look at a contract, we go through a whole litany of, of is, is, it the, is it still right, is it good? You know, my, my going in argument last year was, I don't, want, I don't want piggybacks or contract extensions that are more than two years old. Well, two years ago, if you can get a contract at the cost from two years ago, now all of a sudden a three year ago contract is looking pretty right. good. So, uh, you know, we're always assessing that. The other, the other thing that, that we lag on, but, but we assess, is, is whether it's cheaper to go in or out. And, and usually, um, anecdotally, if, if, it's, if it's just adding a little more work to an in-house personnel, to in-house personnel, then, then it's, it's probably feasible. But, um, you know, with the mowing contract, the, the biggest thing that Lynn and I, we, we've had conversations, we just haven't hooked up with you, is, is the, the capital. we we got to buy mowers and, and zippers and everything and, and all that, not to mention the, the, the good money for the good mowers. So, um, but, but there are advantages to that. We, we keep on looking at it. We'll continue to do it. Uh, Chief Grimaldi is looking at, uh, do we buy motorcycles or do we lease motorcycles? Um, uh, Chief Fustin, do we buy fire trucks off the line or do we go special? Uh, so we're always looking at, at uh, stuff like that. And, and we're even, and, and we're looking at it. You know, but, but do we finance vehicles or do we not finance vehicles? We're looking at all that all the time. Um, but sometimes we have to, let one like the mowing contract, we kind of got to kick the can a little bit to, to get the, the due diligence to make a good, a good decision. So, um, but thank you for that. Mm -hmm. we'll continue to Anything else before we move on? Okay. <clears throat> Thanks, Thanks, next step. Is everybody, everybody good? Yep. Okay. Right. Um, so we haven't started the general fund yet. I hope you don't mind if I stand. Christine, is it okay? All right. Um, we haven't we haven't started the uh, uh, general fund yet, but we have gotten through some of the uh, CIP. So what you see here is the department heads uh, priority one imperative must do. Um, a couple of the programs uh, now. Now, if you recall back on the back on the previous slide. Uh, the, the 317 fund has has not we have not put any general fund money into it. Last year we put 500,000, uh, and years prior even more. But there's none in right now to fund any of this. Um, so uh, as we're finding out, as we work through some of our grant process, our ADA transition plan uh, is uh, not as robust as the current. Grants, folks, the lack of agreements, and all that want it to be. So we need to uh, take a serious look at revamping our ADA transition plan and come up with a uh, near-term, mid-term, and long-term plan to transition the city to ADA. Um, as you well know, for those of you that have been here for a while, the AD, uh, ADA rules change all the time. So we have to keep up and keep that thing updated, but uh, we need to get a, a plan um, 
out there and start executing it. Uh, the good news is we're executing it now. Any project we have uh, that, that is of a robust nature uh, becomes ADA compliant. The most recent uh, Frank Flag ADA compliant project we've done is the uh, City Hall uh, kitchen. Uh, we, uh, we updated that and made it ADA compliant. Uh, fence dugout and backstop replacement. Um, I think this has been, uh, the can's been kicked uh, two years, Susan. Um, so it's time to do it. I kicked the can on the, uh, um, on the, the gym for a couple of years, the gym floor for a couple of years, the paint at the YMCA for a couple of years. This is the last one that I've been uh, uh, kicking the can on that, I, that we need to act on. It's, uh, it's getting a little bit dangerous in some places and uh, we need to replace them. Uh, ball field lamp replacement, uh, time for that. I think we're going to LED on those. Uh, that'll be uh, good for the environment, uh, save us a little bit of uh, electricity. Um, Facility HVAC replacement, that's for here, it's right here. Uh, so don't look up, <laughs> uh, but if you do, you know why we need to replace it. Um, uh, the HVAC is, is probably the wrong type of HVAC for this uh, building, and it's causing condensation, and, and condensation up there causes other things you don't want to get into. Um, playground replacements. Um, City Hall building HVAC, uh, that project's out there. Um, and we also have a bunch of people from uh, public utilities moving to the Dorothy L. Hugel City Center Annex. It's enough to drive my uh, throat out there. Um, so we're gonna repurpose City Hall, make sure we have it the way we want it before we redo the HVAC. Uh, as you're well aware, the first thing you don't you don't want to do is put all the ductwork in place and then start putting walls up where the ductwork doesn't keeps uh, keeps our our, our uh, one person freezing and the next person boiling. I think it's Tim, right? Tim, you 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 freeze. Uh, wear a hat. <laughs> uh, City Hall repurposing. I just talked about that. Uh, it's a pretty healthy uh, number right there, um, but. Uh, we're gonna to try to repurpose for uh, the, the cheapest amount possible. In that uh, money, by the way, is some, I'll call it hardening, um, uh, just to get compliant. I've talked to the mayor a little bit about that uh, uh, in a few areas around the city hall. Some of that's already taken place. Uh, public works fence replacement. There's a uh, fence that's in the vicinity of the, uh, uh, the railroad that needs to replace. Uh, it's dilapidated, it's falling apart, and uh, uh, I need to get a new fence up there to protect the assets inside uh, Public Works. And then uh, uh, facility paving, uh, we just talked about that today. Um, we're looking at the best time to do that. Uh, we have some other Public Works things moving in place that uh, might push that down the road. We don't want to pay Public Works and then change its, uh, its mission out there. So we're, we're, we're toying with that. Uh, priority two, essential should do, Riverwalk Park, South Phase Design. Uh, I know one of you would put that on the priority one list, maybe all of you, uh, but right now it's uh, priority two. Uh, that can move around. Uh, the Dunlop Nav, right lane at Nova Road. Um, that also uh, uh, is, a, is a project obviously high on our priority list. Um, uh, we can get TPO money for it. We can use half cent sales tax money for it, uh, but uh, it's on our priority two list. The beautification of I-95 interchange, in the near future, you'll see a few design concepts on that. Uh, important to note that uh, Margaret Tomlinson found out that the irrigation and the landscaping is gonna be done by FDOT. So that is something that we had originally thought that we were on the hook for. So, uh, so that, that beautification or our piece of it with the wall or whatever we all decide to do uh, as a uh, entrance to Port Orange, uh, it may come down in price or uh, you may choose to keep at that price and put a nicer, uh, uh, a nicer uh, uh, Port Orange sign. Uh, gear extractor and dryers for the fire department, uh, $44,000. That's just uh, uh, to, to get uh, 
to basically clean our gear. Uh, general renovations, repurpose. Uh, as you, what I think you're aware, the uh, Parks and Rec team is going to go to the Dorothy L. Hinkle, uh City Center Annex, and they're going to repurpose the uh, gym and make it more of a of a, an area that's conducive for the kids to uh, do their homework, uh, just have a place to hang out, so they're not on the steps over by the library. Rarely. Community center? What's that? Community center? You could call it a community center light. <laughs> um, parks maintenance uh, storage. Um, right now our gear is, is behind a fence, but not covered. So the, uh, the weather uh, plays havoc on our gear after a while, mm -hmm. and we really need a place to protect that, like the rest of the gear uh, uh, in the city. Uh, resurface parking lots, uh, facilities A and B, I believe is, Susan, help me, A and B, or Lynn? Causeway Docks. Co Causeway Docks, thank you. Causeway Park. Causeway Park, um, Public Works Admin, interior renovation. Uh, that building is seeing the same thing this building is seeing. Um, Lynn has done a great job of, uh, of removing a lot of the, the uh, ground around the uh, foundation. I think you've sealed the foundation. We're getting ready to. Did the roof? Uh, roof's out for bid right now. Roof's out for bid, and after we fix the exterior, we need to hit the interior on that. Um, <clears throat> I was putting off on, on paying for a lot of this because I thought Thompson was moving faster, and I thought we'd have a lot of momentum going there, but, but we don't yet. They're moving. Don't worry, they're moving. And then we have a, a beat up old workshop. Uh, the, the joke today was uh, it's got the uh, particle pegboard walls. Uh, used to be a quarter inch thick, but all just add rain and now it's three quarter inch thick. It's uh, grown. So uh, we need to replace that and, and make it a, a viable workshop for the guys. And then uh, there's some other stuff in there, the second floor city hall conference room upgrades. Let's go back to that last that page for a second, yes, sir. Jake. Before we move on, comments, questions about anything on that list? Priority, Priority one, one list. One uh, point, almost 1.6 mil. I, I think most of those seem, to, but when you're talking about the should do, so I want to make sure that everybody has a chance to chime in. Anybody have comments or questions about anything on that list? Okay. I would, uh, I would say the top two there uh, have been items that you all have talked about multiple times during this year. Uh, I haven't messed with these priority lists yet, uh, but I would, as a city manager, I would advocate heavily to get those funded with the rest of them as well. And uh, uh, I'd imagine that, that you would all consider that as well, based on our, our uh, budget. So there's some CIP items out there that, that have impact on the general fund operations budget, um, things that I think are, are, are very important. Uh, the, the generator, we have a bunch of failing generators all over the city. Uh, when I say failing, they, they work, but uh, the one in the police department, the exhaust is a little bit close to the, uh, too close to the uh, uh, intake for the air conditioning. Um, uh, 70, 73 has got a portable generator right outside the door right now uh, to hardware if the uh, generator fails. Uh, 71 had problems last year. Uh, YMCA had problems. Um, so. We, I've asked Lynn to really lean forward with a, uh, uh, a good generator program. Um, this is one of those cases. This is the police department to get the, uh, to get the exhaust uh, taken care of. Um, public Works, two message boards. We thought these were replacements, but they're not. Those are the message boards that direct uh, traffic flow. Uh, they're 18K each. And, uh, 
the Public Works uh, uh, Fire Department kitchen replacements at Fire Station 71 and 74, 20K each. Those would all impact the general fund if we funded them. <clears throat> Other a la carte items that we've discussed uh, multiple times at previous council meetings, uh, and, and one that's fairly new, but we've talked about the staff before, is the uh, transport program. Uh, fully funded ambulance, uh, we have 75K in this year's budget that's unspent. We'd roll that over with 75K in next year's budget for 150 and uh, three firefighters, additional overtime equipment and gear, 426K. What that doesn't, that nowhere in here have we talked about revenue generated. All right, so that, that will, will generate some type of revenue. Jake, on that one, I could see a, a need to have a separate workshop just on that particular item. Uh, I know we did it last year. Sure. We're going to have to again because there's plenty of new data since then. And, and absolutely, we'll we'll uh, we'll do that. There's there's uh, there are a few things last year when when we kind of put it on the back burner after we said yes that that we're moving forward on um, the. Uh, the request to do closest uh, response, closest unit response, mm -hmm. is it's in somebody's inbox in uh, in um, at the county. So we hope to get a reply from them uh, sometime soon, so we can get uh, so we can move forward with that. That was one of the things you said that absolutely had to happen if you wanted to do it. So I'm working to get that. Uh, Jim Deneen said that that. He would work with us was the comment that he made the chief and I uh, in a one-on-one -on -one meeting with a bunch of other people present. So, so I think we're we're okay at least to hold him to his word. I'm so, sure he'll work with us. That's so, one less unit they have to deploy. Well, right. Um, and then fires also asking for a 105 foot uh, ladder uh, aerial quint, a little bit bigger than the one we currently have, um, is. Chief, is that the right price, 950? Yes. Yep, 950K. Uh, and 71 would have to be uh, extended, the garage have to be extended to housing. Probably that driveway too. Yeah. And just hang on the street. Right, <laughs> <laughs> drive. <laughs> oh, to go out, yeah, yeah. 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 To exit. Jake, you're looking at upgrading? From a 75 to a 105, is that what we're doing? What are we doing there? Chief, why don't you give them a little bit of uh, detail on that? We're going to bring the mic over, Chief. <clears throat> yeah, the, excuse me, the, the city purchased the 75 in 2014, I believe. Uh, it's not the height, it's the reach. With the setbacks of our buildings, the 75 footer, when you park it in front of the building, will seldom reach the building. Uh, I think it was a quick, poor decision when they bought a 75. Uh, I'm torn on one day I would like to sell it while there's still some residual value to offset the cost of the 105. But we also have an opportunity to pick up insurance services office grade points by having a spare area ladder. Uh, we're reasonably close from reducing our rating from a three to a two. I think with a little bit of hyper testing and having a spare aerial ladder would allow us to drop from a three to a two, which could reduce homeowners and business owners insurance rates. As far as uh, the fire station 71, uh, that is an opportunity uh, to do that. Currently the, the building is too short. And as Drew mentioned, the angle of inclination where it meets the curb would need to be re-engineered. It's just too steep where the driveway comes down and Ridgewood then goes up. So we would need to re-engineer that curve in that area. What's the resale value if you, if you decide to offset the cost? Um, it depends on how quickly we sell it, so quite frankly. It's obviously worth more now. The longer we wait, it's a depreciated value. It's worth less. I, th I think on a good day, we should be able to get between two and 300,000 for it in today's dollars. Chief, it, with the, the, the quit, if it were kept in service, how much service life would you expect 
for a unit like that? I'm trying to define that better with Lynn and our fleet replacement schedule. Um, that fire truck in its current location at Station 72, it's, it's in a busy part of town. We're not running the wheels off of it like we do Engine 73 over here at our main station. Um, I think realistically it's been in service for three years. I think the recommendation on an area ladder is about eight to ten years front line and then two to three years in reserve. I think that's a very liberal time frame. I think that's too long. I think we're keeping our fire apparatus way too long. We don't have enough spares there for it. And the, we've got what, five in operation and two backups, is that what that is? That's correct. So that's a 40% redundancy? And one of those backups is, is generally speaking, not functional anymore. Okay. It's, it's going to take forty percent redundancy would be uh, would be effective, but that's assuming that both vehicles are. Most of our comparables, we reached out to our comparables with uh, Daytona, Daytona, and uh, Palm Coast, and most of them are one for one. They have a spare apparatus for every frontline apparatus. So if they have five frontline apparatus, they have five spares. We have five frontline apparatus. We have two spares, one of which doesn't function as well as I would like it to. We're counting on your efficiency. No. Okay. <laughs> Other questions for the chief on this? Yes. Chief, how healthy, in, in your opinion, how healthy is our current first run of fleet right now? Um, we're hurt. We're hurt. That's why I saw South Daytona's truck running around down here a couple weeks ago. Yeah, we've, we've had South Daytona's okay. spare in Port Orange. Um, we, we need to do something rapidly. Okay. Yeah. Seeing the dollar signs, a little woozy thinking about it. Any other questions for the chief on this? Thanks, chief. So, before we open it up, uh, and, and you're welcome to ask any of the staff, anything you want. Um, we, as I said, we just completed the CIP, or it, who hasn't seen me yet? Susan saw me, I think. Maybe I have seen everybody. I saw Public Works, did I see utilities yet? No. Okay, utilities. Public Works was there, why didn't utilities show up? When, <laughs> who was that guy? I don't know. Know. So it's a high ticket department, I don't know. So I have a giant utility Right, those are enterprise yeah. funds. Uh, so um, uh, there are there are some unknowns there, obviously. Uh, so, some some more number crunching that has to be done. Um, but but the staff uh, as council had mentioned last year, the staff will benefit from uh, a, a little bit of guidance or a little bit of, of what I used to call stick and rudder on, on how you want us to proceed before we, um, before we write up a, a, a budget that's not even close to acceptable. So uh, we welcome the suggestions, we welcome the, uh, uh, the feedback, and uh, please feel free to ask anybody questions uh, uh, that you may have. Yes, let's move forward. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm going to make one comment. Do we have to do all this this year? I mean, a lot of this stuff has been around for a couple of years. What we need is a plan to gradually do it or to do it in a timely manner. But to put almost $4 million on the line this year is going to and be as, very difficult. As I mentioned, I, I would show you everything. Uh, I, I haven't racked and stacked, I haven't cut. Okay. Uh, you have never seen, in my time here, I've never been this open Komodo to you this early on. I usually cut it and then show you a draft after I've cut it and, 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 and talk to staff about it. Second related question. <clears throat> we have what's called a turnover account. It has many different names. It's a surplus that is generated by this year, the difference between what we received in revenues and what we 
have spent. Um, and it usually runs about a million, a million two. How much of that money would be available to fund a lot of these projects? So, because it's one time only money, so it would fit that carry it over. So you're, you're talking about the difference between the, 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 the revenue differences, number yeah. one, and, and the planned budget versus the executed budget. Right. There are, there are a lot of items uh, that, that we plan to do that we never get to. Um, a lot of those, at the end of the year, Tracy comes to you and asks to roll those over. And, and so what I've, asked, what I've asked staff to do is, I don't want projects to wrap up in July and then do nothing till October and then go out to bid in October and nothing gets done till January. So a lot of those projects and their money roll over into the new year. So um, uh, some of that million is ate up by that, that rollover of projects. So it was um, my understanding, you know, just for clarification, yeah. that the one approximately million dollars in turnover was did not include that 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 fund that revenue did not include um, unfinished projects and the like that we've been systematically generating over the last four or five years. We we do we do save money from efficiencies, projects never done or, or, yeah, or absolutely our personnel is you a bet. big one, all that. You bet. And we we fund it, we fund our personnel at hundred percent. Yeah. And I, I've never seen a staff 100% manned, so yeah. Could you provide an estimate of that amount of money? Because that would be a good source to fund these one-time only expenditures. It, it always is, and it, it always could be. But keep in mind that, that your your fund balance is going down. And so, so that money, some of that money, rolls to fund balance, right? So you put your million in the fund balance, and then you take $500,000 or, or one year, $2.4 million out of fund balance to fund CIP projects. So you're rolling that money over anyhow. It's just going somewhere else before. Well, I would goes. like, so rather than we, go to, you know, just for guidance. Sure. I'm not big about a huge increase in taxes this year. Never are. None of us are. I, okay. I got that. So one of the ways we can handle it is by making more obvious use of the, of that surplus account. Now recall that recall that Mr. Rosen showed you that that five year graph of, of we're not going to get there from here. Uh, that million helps uh, helps refill the the fund balance coffers. Um, you're welcome to use it whichever way you like based on the guidance you've provided uh, on fund balance. Um, we can we we can give you estimates. It, I would, it is I what would it really is. appreciate but that. And, and so, so, but but we are very early on yeah. to project how much. Uh, <coughs> but but Councilman Ford, you're right. We it's usually a million. Uh, and I don't expect it to be any different due to efficiencies and 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 things we can't do or things we decide not to do. So yeah, but last um, year we can do it again. Um, yeah, it's, so, you know, Margaret Tomlinson's not here, but uh, her and Larry Roberts and, and Tim's team struggle with, with lap agreements and, and just some things don't get done. They just can't get done. So. Yeah, and Tracy wants to chat a little bit about recurring. But, okay. but you can't, you can't spend um, money. You know that one-time expenditures. It's appropriate to fund them out of our savings account or our fund equity, whereas recurring items, it's not. And so it's sort of like when you go to Tracy. Yes. Pull a little closer because you're in and out. <laughs> Is that better? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, so, our working capital policy talks about recurring and non-recurring revenues and expenditures. 
So it's a very wise policy in that it points to using recurring revenue sources for recurring expenditures and one-time revenue sources for one-time expenditures. And so therefore, when something falls down to fund balance at the end of the year, it's very much fair game to fund projects. And that's been the history of the council, is to allow it to fall to fund balance and then to tap it for the, the CIP sort of request. But when you're looking, and there's a mixture of what you're seeing, some of them are, are recurrent or have that recurrent element to them, who are more programmatic, and some of them are more projects. And so when you look at them, while it's, it's appropriate <coughs> if you have one-time things in the general fund, it's too early at this point. We haven't even had input from the departments to know what they're looking for. It's appropriate to comb through and say, okay, well, we need to purchase this thing. It doesn't raise to the level of the CIP. It's too small, but it's still a one-time thing. That's an appropriate use of some of that rollover fund or that. And we have in the past, we've, we've used about 500,000 each year for those items that are in the operating budget that are one-time in nature. So I just wanted to you know, elaborate on that. Okay, and I, I understand, but hopefully, when you're doing the one-time ones, they involve at least a sizable number of these on the list. Or are you funding things that council doesn't know about? No, these are when, when we give you the general fund budget and all of the detail, the, the big thick document you get with all of the detail right. in it. There, in some of the comments, there will be like a, a one-time purchase of something that, a piece of equipment or something, that might be expensive enough to outline, but not expensive enough to make it into the CIP. But we're not going to have to buy it every year. So those are the one-time things that it's a, a, and we have tapped equity for that as a revenue source. If we go back, um, so you're using it for overspending in a budget, is what you're saying? I would not characterize it that way. Um, if you see on line four <coughs> above, it talks about one-time expenses that are in the current year budget of 500000 So that would otherwise have fallen down to equity. It's basically equity that we are using for one-time things. But shouldn't that have been budgeted as part of the budget that we voted on? That was budgeted as part of the budget. And That's in the fiscal shouldn't we budget. have funded it to sufficiently? Your offset for that would be an additional millage increase. The, the offset, yeah, if we had not that. used that, that would have been millage that you would have needed to look to. So, no, no. When, I get, when council passes a budget, mm -hmm. we do two things. We pass projects, personnel, programs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On top of that, we then align them with specific funding. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And what you're saying is that we're passing some projects and not providing the funding, specific funding to them. We're waiting for later? No, sir. I'm sorry, I haven't explained it that well. Okay. In, um, would you like me to go back through it again? Scott? No, no, uh, we can talk privately okay. and you can explain it to me. Okay, but it is in the budget. It's, it's very clearly in the budget that was passed. Okay. But it's I'm only process. talking about the use of surplus funds, not identified funds. Not sure I follow where you are. Funds that were not spent or did not need to be spent yes. for various reasons. They fall to fund balance. Turn on. Yes. It falls to fund it, balance. It falls to yeah. fund balance and then council reappropriates it. Yeah, reappropriates. And that's what I, the right. question I'm asking how large is that amount for this year estimated? I'd like that number. Mm -hmm. And how, and that could be a very good source to fund. Um, some of the one time only uh, projects for and, 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 um, we, and we, we do. There, there's the use of equity. Uh, so, in the current year, you have 1149851 that is in the current budget. That breaks out largely into a $700,000 transfer into the 317 fund and a $500,000 transfer into the 505 fund to improve the equity portion of the 505 fund. All of that's outlined in the budget that was passed. The main items in the 317 fund were the Causeway Dock. Um, I believe I have a note here. So this, I guess the best way to explain it is, is that uh, a lot of the over uh, the, the underages that we have from the years, prior years 
go to the next year's budget and when we see the words uh, uh, appropriated equity, that's what we're tapping. Exactly. But okay. yeah, so, so exactly. not that it's the same dollar, but that 1.149 million could have been the same dollars that we didn't use in 17. It right. went to fund equity, then we put it to 317 right. and 505 mm -hmm. as appropriated equity. Well, well, in those previous years, that money was collected within the current rate and revenue we were getting. Right. Mm -hmm. What was collected the following year when those projects were pushed forward to the, to the next year and they didn't need to be funded? What were they replaced with? That's going to be. No, you're, it, we'll talk to you offline. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not. I, uh, I have worked in a couple of different organizations where, government organizations, where rollover monies from the previous year were actually used as revenues for this, for the next fiscal year. Why don't we account for them that way, Tracy? Well, first of all, our, our working policy says, first of all, that they're used for one-time purchases. Right. If we were to, to do that, if we were to just put it in, it would just be another bucket of money. Right. So, you know, it's... So if we just started with a one point, say we had $1.1 $1 .1 million left at the end of the year and we rolled it over, that's what we started with, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be properly accounted for it, and it... It wouldn't fall down to fund the capital project. It wouldn't fall. So yeah. it, wouldn't, it wouldn't fall. It would get held in suspense and it wouldn't fall. So then if you wanted to fund capital projects, you'd have to charge millage for it. So it's, it's six and one half a dozen at the end. At the end of the year, the end of the fiscal year, we average about a million to a million two in surplus funds. Right. That because of good governance, because we didn't spend all the money we thought we would. Efficiencies, everything. Okay. Yep. That is a pot of money which I would argue would be perfect for capital. Where, where, One so, time only expense. Just so I'm clear, where do you think that money goes now? I, I, I know where the money goes. I've watched it go around. It goes into various funds and revenue, uh, I mean, fund balances and the like in the, in the general fund, yes. No. No. Where do you put it? It falls to the fund equity, and then we fund, so, so we take our $1 million, right. we put it over here, and, and that's what staff does. Then council approves a budget where we take that money and put it in the 317 fund and the 505 fund. That's to cool. fund one one and time fund. and the general fund and to fund general. one time items. Well, that's what I was asking. It, it could spell that I, way. Around. I was asking to look at how much that is this year, you know, estimated, mm -hmm. and then take a look at how many of those three seventeen projects could be funded with that or well, would be appropriate. I think Councilman Ford, we're, we're saying that what you're early. telling us to do, we do. Yeah, I know it's early, and I know this is yeah. current practice. We just don't know those dollars yet. Right, right. So I guess what Bob's asking is, well, we do know what those dollars we'll, are. We'll keep on updating you with what we think they're going to be and keep on updating the estimates. Please um, do. Um, yeah, I agree. Okay. But, but Scott, based on, I wanted, based I wanted on Tracy to finish because she was about to give us a reminder of what those funds were used for from last year. Is that what you started to say? Yes, sir. So last year, on this slide, when you see the 500000 for one-time purchases, if you go through your document, there's close to that. Mm -hmm. And then if you, the 1.149, that portion of equity, uh, 700000 went to the 317 fund. Major pieces of that was two hundred and twenty for the Causeway docks, 100000 for Riverwalk, 103,000 for gym floor replacements and 151 for parking lots. Those are the big ones. There are, much, there are many smaller projects, but those are the, the, the meat of it. And then 450,000 went to supplement the 505 fund, which is the lease and replacement fund. That needed supplementing primarily because of the ERP is going to be funded out of that. So it was running low on equity. So those are those pieces of, of equity that are being used in fiscal 18. <coughs> So the other thing, the other piece of that is that when we have projects, those dollars carry over with those projects until they're completed. Mm -hmm. At the completion of those projects, those excess dollars, when we're efficient, become, become unappropriate equity so that at budget time, we add up those dollars and figure out what we have, again, for the next year's projects and the like. Correct. And for simple math, 
out of our $37 million budget, how much is that is allocated to one-time expenditures? It was, that's the general fund budget. Yes. So it was 500000 in the general right. fund budget. Make sure it I was allocated it. to one-time expenditures. It showed up in the yeah. general fund budget, the operating type of budget, as opposed to the capital, which is over in 317. Course, yeah. Right, they, they went over to the Plus the capital. Right. Yeah. That's, gotcha. that's what got shifted over to capital. <coughs> Other questions? Before I'd just like to, as, as Jake mentioned before, um, going back to the five year forecast, I haven't updated it since you guys saw it last time. But the, the overall just there was status quo is what we've been doing, including taking that one time money and putting it back towards the capital <coughs> as we have been doing. as. as uh, Councilman Ford was talking about. Just a status quo without any new positions and doing that for the next five years, at the end of the five years, our fund balance goes negative. Right now we have uh, a fund balance, an unassigned fund balance. You know, we want to be between 30 and 35%. And that forecast included the thought that we would get our money back from FEMA. So even, but even with getting that money back, status quo, the way we've been doing things at some point, you're spending more money than you're taking in overall, and at some point, you start going negative. And so, we're gonna have to figure out something in the future to make sure that we're gonna have to have enough revenue and decrease spending enough where those lines, where we're not spending more than we're taking, we're not, we're not spending more than we're taking in. Just a question for you. How much will our fund balances be brought back to 35% when we get the hurricane monies? I, yeah, it should be brought back, but even with, I've already included that in my forecast, even with that at the year five. I read your forecast, yeah. and I, you know, while it's well done as usual and professional, um, I have great doubts about some of the assumptions, and we all do. The assumptions are difficult to make, and you know, I have, you know, I, I see this council as being more conservative and more fiscally cautious than the assumption assumes. Well, the assumption assumes no increase in spending above what you're spending now. Hmm. So we'd have to cut. We'd have to, we have to cut. We can't, that, that, the forecast included the expenditures that you already have um, uh, agreed to with contracts no new positions, um, no increase even for, uh, I think, CPI in your general expenditures. And, and the only decrease that I guess you really could make is spending zero dollars on capital, as, as the general fund forecast here shows. Let me make a quick comment. If you spend within your means, if you spend either the same or less than you take in, you will never go negative. The problem, the problem is we're not doing that now. How are we not doing that now? We've got one point. Well, because when you, when you have, um, we had a really strong fund balance. And when you have a really strong fund balance, what you generally do as a city is you don't want to charge people too much uh, in taxes, so you take that extra savings that you have and use it towards your one-time things. You do that in good times, and that's generally, financially speaking, what sh cities should do with their fund balance. But you get to a point where you can't keep relying on that source of revenue forever because at some point you get to the perfect point of where your fund balance should be, then now you have to figure out, how do I now fund that CIP? And we're kind of at that tipping point where we've got to make a decision, maybe not now, but in the next couple of years, to make sure we keep the ship right. Yeah, because weren't we, not, not, not too many years ago, Tracy, and, and I know it probably was before you came on board, but wasn't our fund balance in the high 40%? I mean, yeah. we were, yeah. So we spend, 50, we spend that down, we spend that down over the years, every year, instead of raising taxes, but you can't continue to spend that down and you're going to be in trouble with your fund balance. And so I, I kind of get what Alan's, and that's talking about you even mentioned the word hurricane yeah and we and as a council we looked at, at parameters for our fund balance and we said we want to mm -hmm. this is our low this is our high we want to operate in this area and not just 
stockpile taxpayer dollars, but have a plan for that stuff and, and be fiscally responsible, but not just be piling money and piling money. And so we, we've created those parameters, but we've also, over the last several years, we've been spending down uh, to take care of projects that needed to be, be getting done and funding it out of the fund balance. And, and to sort of complete the circle on our discussions, the initial estimates that you're seeing, and they are very initial, and they're very, very high level at this point, but it shows that we can turn the page at our current millage rate, which is, of course, a tax increase according to the property appraiser. But that's the flat current millage. But what is not in there is any of the CIP. So we are kind of, when Alan said we're like at that tipping point, we're not, this, this is not allowing us to fund CIP without dipping into our reserves. So you say this is raw and this is early. What? This is raw and this is early. It is very raw <laughs> and it is very early. I mean, this is April, so these are, they are very large assumptions, but that's, I think the takeaway is we can continue operating in October as we've operated in September, however, None of the a la carte items or the other things are, are currently able to be funded. But can I operate with the same assumption that um, if 500000 of last year's budget were one time expenses that are already funded, then that's 500000 I have to work with before anything is already included in this that, That's That's in there. Um, if we back up, move um, forward here. And correct me if I'm wrong, I'm clear. The 500 is in there. See, the, the 500 Soon. is above that line where you say fiscal 18 or re original revenue budget is is using 500,000 of equity. That same assumption is, is carried forward into where we are now because they haven't removed it below that line. So you're still assuming that you at a similar rate as in the past. Yeah. Let, let me caution you. If we don't spend more than we take in, we will never have a problem with fund equity. That, that is correct. We would, have to, we would have to cut The assumption is, is that council is going to continue to spend more than they take in. And I have problems with that assumption. If we made some very intelligent decisions, this council did, to spend some of our fund equity because when it got into the 50% range, it was too high. And we also made it responsible. We said we don't want to fund programs. We want it to fund, you know, one-time only expenses. And so clearly each year we have to be cautious, and I appreciate your caution, that we shouldn't be spending more than we take in. Okay. So we just and we gotta watch this as a trend as well. Yeah. So Mayor uh, that if, if you want to put a little box on that, we count, staff needs to know if you don't want to spend that $500,000 um, on one-time items because it exceeds the amount we take in. We just, we, we, could, uh, we could afford that direction tonight. Councilman Ford just said, council said, but I, I would like to hear it as a consensus item moving forward uh, so we can, so we can kind of, at least write the budget that way. Individually, uh, Drew. So, so just there's two ways to do it: throw 500 grand in there, mm -hmm. and and continue to whittle down on the fund balance and spend more than we take in revenue because we're adding from our savings account, if you will, or 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 the bad word, raise the balance. Right? Those are the only two ways to make up that money. And, and we've, I mean, our history, we, we've been doing this for a number of years, so. That, that's why we threw it in there. Yeah, but, 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 but now would be a great time if kind of we're getting that idea. We could straight I don't want to do that. I'd want to see it in there. That's, if you look at the orange line on this graph, that shows the one-time um, appropriations yeah. of equity for one time thing versus the transfers out to other funds like 505 and 317. Okay. And so you can see over the past um, a couple years ago we used a million, but the 500 is kind of where it's been. And last year we, we last year 500,000 was about what we used for one time. It is what we use. It, it, for us, I mean, if we really have yeah. to pick it all. I mean, but, right. And knowing. Keep, that, 
we save more than that. We're reversing the trend if you keep that. But the 317 that. hasn't been. The 500 is a reversal of the trend. Yeah. Chase, your thoughts? We have a loan pool, correct? $2.7 million? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. I mean, I'd, I'd assume take, take it from there. If, if the things that we need, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'd be willing to look at other options from what the, the um, you know, I, I'm, I'm in agreement with Bob. If you, you don't, you don't have it, you don't spend it, and you never go in the red in that situation. But I get if we need something that we have to look uh, look at strongly what our needs are and go forward with that. But uh, you know, I I looked at 2.7 million that we have not allocated that is cash available for one-time pur purchases. I would, I want to explore that um, to see well, what we need to do. The loan pool has come in handy and given the council some flexibility in recent years. Um, an example is we're currently using it to fund the Causeway Docks. Um, that's a million dollar mm -hmm. project that the only way it could move forward is with use of the loan pool funding. So we put loan pool funding into that project while we applied for grants, which have come in and then they came in and, and we needed part. the money so badly that we reallocated everything to move the fact that we actually got that to the next project that was yes. screaming for funding, which I think was the PDAC, wasn't it? PDAC. It, it was yeah. the Police Department's Air Conditioning that was coming yeah. in higher. So once we got that grant funding, we reallocated and, and moved that over to fund the air conditioning project at the Police Department. So and I get that. There's always, there's always going to be a need. I mean, we can always say, well, we need this 500000 We wouldn't be able to do it without this either. Well, the loan pool has advantages. It also was recently yeah, used just, for um, renovation. Keeps you from having to borrow. Well, it does. Keeps it keeps you from having, having to borrow. It gives you flexibility to move projects forward that you don't have the, the entire funding already lined up for. So, um, of course, it's council's direction that we accept, but I just want to remind you of the flexibility that comes with having a loan pool. And keeping in mind that $500,000 is still less than our excess from last year. Wait, that, that's still a black number. I'm sorry. Tracy, is there, is, there a, um, is there a recommended number uh, to be maintained in your loan pool based on the, the value of your, your assets and your infrastructure and stuff like that? Kind of like we do with the, with the fund balance. Is there any kind I could of... research it, but I don't okay. know off the top of my head. I, I just would, I, I would caution counsel. I, I think the mayor just mentioned a perfect point very careful about diminishing your loan pool. Yeah, that loan pool is your financial safety net when unexpected occurrences, and we've seen plenty of them over the last few years. That's what I'm saying. No, 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 it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. You gotta make sure you understand the difference between that and your fund balance. Mm -hmm. So in, in, in diminishing our loan pool can put us in situations where we've not got to borrow money to do emergency projects on our infrastructure in our city our assets and so That's we're not a small yeah. city anymore we're not we're not a, we're not a 20,000 resident city we've got a huge infrastructure and, and, and expensive things can unfortunately happen in the blink of an eye and we're, if, from a financial conservative perspective because that's what we want to be as a council we're in much better shape borrowing our own money and dealing being able to financially deal with those projects as opposed to going out there and having to borrow money and now pay a lot more for a project that we didn't have to pay for in the first place. So I'm, all I'm saying is I don't know that we have to make that decision tonight. Just think about that mm -hmm. from a perspective of being conservative and responsible, that loan out the loan pool holds tremendous value for the unknown. And that's all that's just what I'm saying. Let me suggest the loan pool was one of many interesting innovations by Ken Park. Most cities don't have a loan pool. What they have is their fund balances, surplus revenues. Any surplus revenue, any money in that is not absolutely assigned, it may have a wish to it, council can redirect to serve emergencies. The loan pool was something quite interesting that was, whose purpose was to make it psychologically easier to borrow to fund projects. 
because rather than saying I'm going to look into, I'm going to take money out of my um, surpluses, you just say let's go to the loan pool and people will pay it back. And the problem is with the poor loan pool, it rarely gets paid back. Uh, yeah, that's not entirely true. Well, the that's golf mostly golf. not true. The golf course. Uh, that's one exception. Uh, that's one I'll exception. Give you a that second, I one a second one. I give you ninety-eight Riverwalk. Uh, you're wrong about that because no. we got a lot of bond funding. That floated money until we got revenues from no. five grants Riverwalk, and things like Riverwalk, that. Riverwalk took almost five million of loan money to support it to the point town center right now. And Riverwalk or town center continues to be a significant one of the reasons we're having such difficulties as city financially. We've got a couple of lawsuits. The pensions. Mm -hmm. And this is not this council's fault. Uh, they got away from council back <coughs> for about a decade, and we ended up, and we had been sweating blood pay to pay them back. The second one we have is town center. Town center, what, four to five hundred thousand a year we have to pay in there? Mm -hmm. Which is funded by the loan pool. Funded by the loan pool, yeah. Funded by the loan pool, right. which we transferred money how many years ago in there? Well, two or three? Well, we've tra we've every year we've been transferring money from the loan pool yeah. to sustain mm -hmm. that while we work on redevelopment in that area, and then it can pay it back. You know that the hope is, and, and it's looking quite bright. Uh, we know, are keeping that. accounting, which is good. Yeah. Right. So the, how much is owed back to the loan pool? Right? I don't know off the top okay. of my head. Right. It depends on where the money goes and where the money comes out. from. It's going to the town center C area. It'll, it'll never come back because we don't have any improvements down there to uh, well, when bring we us the revenue we want. But but it's a claim on that. So when you know, assuming that the efforts yield fruit in that CRA, they have we have a claim on on that via the loan pool. So as that loan pool the also keeps us in. from borrowing against water funds for inappropriate mm -hmm. costs and things like that. It does. Mm -hmm. That keeps us out of our enterprise funds. It does. There are cities that do that. Yeah, just there's a big one to the north, which I won't name their name, but that's the deal about ours. I don't, I, I don't have a word for the status quo that we presented tonight. For now? For now. The status quo budget's fine. Okay. With, with the 500? Yeah. Okay. Status quo. All right. As is. Any yeah. other questions? Mm -hmm. I just want to correct something that I said um, before uh, Councilman Ford. To the five-year forecast, I did add a percent change in CPI going forward. Again, that's it's Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland and U.S. Department of Agriculture forecast for the upcoming five years. But it's like forecast of the weather. You you know, it's you never know what's going to actually happen. Um, but again, these were all assumptions that the council can feel free to please edit, change what they feel might be um, more appropriate in the future, and we can take a look at it again. And hey, Alan, that's a terrific tool, but unlike the weather, the weather just happens to us. We can fiscally be responsible and make changes and make things happen, so. You got anything else for us? You got the microphone? I'm sure there are members of the public who would like to have some words. Absolutely. Anyone like to speak? Hi, my name is Ted Noftal. I live on Chickadee Drive, and I want to make a couple of comments here tonight, or, or question first. Does this budget have a tax increase in it? Or is this a rollback budget? Which is it? I'm unclear. I'll just speak up since my mic doesn't work. The, it's been proposed, or it's been estimated, at 4.4881, which is our current millage. I have nothing from the property appraiser, but the expectation is that that would be classified as above the rollback, obviously, because we're in a growth period. It assumes growth, so it would result in a tax increase. Okay, so, so if we're gonna hold the millage and we're gonna say have a 7% property value increase, we've got a 7% tax increase going in this budget, is that correct? Or thereabouts? 
I would wait for the property appraiser's numbers. I don't calculate rollback without real numbers. This is, right. this is large and estimated at this point. But, but this question is prefaced, ma'am, on were. Were a 7% uh, increase to come down from the property appraiser, and you hold millage even, we're looking at about a 7% property tax increase. We're looking at an increase of revenue of approximately $515,000. That's what's calculated in here for an ad valorem increase. I'll tell you that. But as for how that's going to calculate, it's too early to say. And, and now just an observation, and, and uh, I have little sympathy for the manager, typically, but I do remember him coming to council last year saying, for God's sake, give me direction that I can work with. And I would ask that you do that right here tonight. Here's where you nip it in the bud. There's some people at the, at the dais that we couldn't increase taxes high enough, but there are people on this uh, dais that, that at least profess that they don't want tax increases. Well, now is when you do it. Now is when you give the manager his marching orders. What is an acceptable property tax increase this year? Go ahead and, and, and tip your cards. Give him what he needs so he can build a budget. Otherwise, we just come back to the game. Councilman Ford referred to last year where the discussion will ultimately boil down to a handful of cherries that we can't afford, but we can afford half of a handful of cherries. Please, council, do that tonight. That's what your manager needs. Another observation that was made here tonight, the, the fire engine we bought in 14 was a quick, bad decision. Well, what's different here tonight with the new $900,000 fire engine? Why isn't that a quick, bad decision? What's different? The players around the table are different, but beyond that. And I guess a question that, that is just burning in me, we paid seven or 800,000 or six or 700,000 in 14, is now worth 200,000. How many fires did it go to? How many fires did the, that fire engine go to? And now it's just trashy or, uh, or keep it as a reserve. This is horrible, guys. And you know you have immense uh, cut in property taxes coming because that amendment is going to be passed. People would be foolish not to vote for a tax increase for themselves. And once again, that's being ignored. That decision is being ignored here tonight from what I can say. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Jerry Harris, and uh, I I'm having a lot of problems with this budget. And I, I know there's so many figures to even wrap your head around it. And my main concern is still the public safety, which is, number one, our Port Orange Police Department. I'm just floored with one officer figured into this budget with all the population that's coming here. I, I just, I don't think that's good. I, I truly don't. There's got to be a way to make it happen to where they get the manpower they need. Because I know they're split thick. I'd like, a lot I'd like of people to, here know it. I'd like to clarify real quick that, that this is not the budget proposal. Okay. This is what it would take to turn the page October 1st and run with the current budget with, with only two changes, a janitor and a police officer. And I chose to put those in there. Okay. Chief Grimaldi wants three. I, I know that for a fact, but that's not in this yet. You know, that will come in about a month or two. Okay. Yes, even brief me on it. Yeah. So, so don't don't well, think sir, this is the budget. We are still bare bones. It, this is bare bones. Council asked me if 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 today's budget perceived contracts, union agreements, give me what it would take. So, like a good manager, I didn't do what they asked, and I added a cop and a and a janitor and said, this is what it would be plus these two. Well, I, I appreciate you. So, 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 yeah, we, really we have, we have a lot, there's a lot more in there that we haven't even added yet. Okay. You bet. Thank you so much. You bet. Thanks, Gary. Anybody else? Closing comments? Start with Drew. I, you know, looking at the, the, the raw numbers and, and what we have right now, that until we get some sharper numbers from there and you know the fine-tuning can't really happen so 
you know, what's been presented, uh, I think, is, is a good, a very good starting point, and then you'll be able to chip away and, and do those things and, and, and based on the numbers and, and the millage rate, but I, I'm, I'm standing strong. I don't want to go backwards. I don't want to cut any, any services. The, the, the citizens have come to expect a certain level, and I don't want to, you know, reduce the level. So uh, that's, that, that's my direction, is that we, um, you know, continue to provide what we're doing, and if there are if if it can if the service levels can be increased in, in police and fire because public safety is the number one, then we do. It. So so they you want me to go each one sure mayor so so they can be yeah I got from you that that you want to stay where where we are. The question is you don't want to go back. The question is do you want to go forward and sure. and and. Again, staff staff will march on okay. march off smartly, but but I know for a fact this budget doesn't include two more police officers that Chief Grimaldi is going to ask me for day after tomorrow when he briefs it. Yeah. I say that I don't know if it's day after tomorrow, okay. but when he briefs his general fund budget to me, and and he's not the only one. He is not the only one. Um, so so you you have options. And, and I just don't, I don't want to give you, I think last year we, we gave you what we thought it would take to run the city the way we thought you wanted it run. And, yeah. and we're way high. And those so are, I don't want to, I don't want to yeah, go down that which road. Which is why we're and, talking now. And and I don't want to go down that road. And, and, and so the, the one thing I do ask is, is, you know, these are good, this is good start, but uh, and eventually we're gonna have to snap the chalk line. You're gonna have to give me some direction on where to go, so um, uh, I got a little bit tonight, but but there, there's a lot to consider. And those broad num the, the numbers tonight is does not include the four hundred and twenty thousand for the plus program for transport. Correct. Co correct. Okay. Does not that is not in that budget. Okay. <coughs> yep. Chase. Um, <clears throat> I know it's extremely early. Um, so we don't have those numbers, but at some point, I, I would like to see at least a presentation of what a budget would look like uh, at the rollback rate, uh, at a place to uh, to look at what we can, what we would be missing, where we where would we start at, um, or at least a, a starting point uh, to see where we were at. I, I would, so, Mayor, I would like council consensus on if that's in fact what council wants us to do because build the budget at a rollback rate with what you would get and what you wouldn't get um, will take some time and effort to give a, a brand new budget. So I know you got to figure out what you got to cut from the status quo to get there, but that's that those are policy decisions for us. That so I think what yeah. we need to know is if we're building a budget on the status quo. We don't have the numbers yet, but when we do, we want to see how much above rollback. If that is above the rollback, because I don't, we don't know that yet, to, for sure or not. Right. Because you also have new construction and light coming online. Right. When we have those numbers, we want to know where we're at. Because the status quo right now spends 1.8 percent more than we did last year, just for the status quo. Correct. Very correct. So, but yeah, essentially, we when we move forward, we do need to know where we are in. Uh, above or below rollback and, with, and with the status quo. But the dollars and cents decisions that we have to make have to be based, in my opinion, have to be based on are we meeting our needs? And if we're not meeting our needs, then we need to meet our needs. And then if we are exceeding our needs and we have some th uh, things that we can cut back, then we need to look for efficiencies. Well, but, and and I, I concur. But so and I, I, I have to do that. I have some of council telling me, show me what rollback looks like. I have some saying, okay. budget your needs. Two different things. Um, just make sure that when we leave, we know where the we get some philosophical body, where the governing to body to wants to go. We're going to drive you nuts with that because I think you build a budget based on what do you need and what's it going to cost, and then figure out from there the impacts on the dollars and cents do we have it or not 
that's where the difference is. I would want to build it at what we have coming in, and then we determine what can be. If we can have a police department or not. Well, we're not going to lose the police department. Not much of it. You have to lose something. What do you want to lose? Chase, let me ask you this right now so we don't have this conversation in August. What do you want to cut from what we have right now? Well, I'm not going to answer that now until I get and see what is at risk of it because we, we, something. we might not have to cut anything. You want no, to no, we will. That we will. 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 Roll back, we we'll, will. We'll all make that decision once we see the, the efficiencies that we'll make, where we're exceeding our needs and we don't need to, we, we are able to cut, uh, and the extra revenue that we have coming in. I'm not going to make this decision but, right now, of course, on day one. You can't no, have no, a, you can't get a direction of building budget rollback when we don't know that. And, and you've got to have an idea of what you're going to cut if you're telling the man to go pull back. That's what staff is paid to do. They're given. I'm going to disagree with you right there, right now. It's just like, well, no. No, no, no. Stop. Let me, let me finish your thought and you play on it, okay? Sure, go ahead. I am not going to say, staff, go cut $640,000 so we can make rollback and let me know what that is. That's our decision. If we're going to make policy decisions, we need to make those decisions. Based on the information they get, this is going to cost you, this is going to cost you, this is going to cost you that, we make those policy decisions. I am not going to sit here and say we need staff to go $640,000 so we're roll back, go find it for me, and wash my hands of that. That is wrong. No, I'm, and I'm not suggesting that. I know, okay. we, I know we, make the, we make the final decision, but staff is currently bringing us a budget of their needs and what they want, so be it, and that's what they would do. Just like I'm given a budget to live with every year, I say, hey, they build your budget based on this amount of money you have coming in. If we decide we need more, it's not the direction we want to go, then we make those decisions. But they're not. They're not well, I'm also going to tell you this. We all voted last year to approve three labor contracts. Those labor contracts came with pay increases for everybody. So if you're going to approve those labor contracts, you darn well better approve the pay for it. And, and of course, uh, no one's going to renege on that. And that's why we look at the we look at the budget coming back in at the rollback. We said, you know what, the numbers don't work. Then we need to increase revenue. Then we go from there. I'm going to agree with Chase. We always should start at what we spent last year, and that's why we're having this exercise. What I wanted to see was what cost of turning the page. And, and you got that. Right? Okay. Yeah. And, and that's, a, a, num that's <clears throat> a good number, okay, to know. So we've got, and I think Chase is absolutely correct, we ought to have a number for rollback. Now I'm not going to ask you to cut anything, I'm just asking, I think Chase is only asking, what does it look like financially, how much money? We can figure that out. And that's not a hard thing to do. But I will say, we're headed into troubled waters. I do not want us to get a large budget with significant increases this year and then find out next year the voters have just put us in an impossible position and that is to find a million dollars and cut it out of the budget. I don't want to lay anyone off ever again. I want us to maintain our programs. And by the way, we have a wonderful city. We have a lot of wants. But right now, we're meeting people's needs. Our satisfaction rates are high. We also, and I, my, I live in a district where people don't make a lot of money. And if we start jacking up our taxes, we're gonna hurt a lot of people. So we have that, what do you call it, sacred duty to spend other people's money wisely and as least we can do. And that's why, and I told you when I saw it, I'm not, I'm looking for a preservation thing. I don't think this is the year to start a lot of new programs or invest in a lot of, of, of new structures. This is a year to maintain our infrastructure, to maintain what we got, and hope to God the wave that's out there doesn't crash against us uh, as a result of these ballot initiatives. <clears throat> in addition, got some possible new sources of funding coming in with the half cent tax, which is beginning to look further away. Um, we can't count on that. No, can't and count on And that's in another budget year than this one. So anyway. the, the issue is how much money do we take from our residents? And I think that's an important thing. And I think everyone in this room should think about it. How much am I going to take? 
from each resident more this year. And to do that, you better be very, very sure that what you're charging them for is really worth it. Yeah. So I, you know, that's why I think it's very, this conversation is very good and useful, but I do think that Chase is absolutely correct. We have a sacred duty to look at how little or the, the increase is going to be and how much we can keep in our taxpayers' pockets. And I'm going to agree. With, I, I agree with that. The thing of it is, is that whatever that dollar amount is, if it means we have to cut something, the decision might not be adding something. It might mean we're going to cut something. But I want the five of us to make that decision. Yes. That's on us. And I hope we all agree on that. Yes. We're not going to do what we did last year. No, no. That's that's totally wrong. We're all over if we want to make that policy decision, we're not going to chicken out from that. Last year we voted three labor contracts. We voted raises for employees. We supported that. Now we've got to pay for it. Not that's right. part of this. That's not part of this. Not so, a problem. I don't think Chase has a problem with it either. No, I, I just, I, whatever we do, the, the, buck stop, the buck stops with us. And we're not going to kick it to staff. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is that we add, whatever it is we subtract, and we're going to stand by it at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Mayor, real quick, Tracy, you got a comment here? On, on this slide, you can see right under the fiscal 18 original revenue budget, the additional revenue that's being estimated is 518000 almost 519000 So that's, an, and again, we are extremely early. I, I can't say that enough, mm -hmm. but that's the amount of money that would need to be identified for cutting if we were to come back to a rollback position in this budget moving forward, in, in this term of And we don't know what that and, is yet. We don't need no new construction numbers. We don't know anybody. Well, that's, that's an, and that's an estimate. Estimate so, 7.2. You know, right Plus minus nothing, we're not funding any CIP, and we're plus minus nothing, assuming that we get that additional 518. Okay. If if we were to go back to a rollback position, it would be a cut from where we are here. So we would need to look at our current levels and determine what needed to be adjusted. Um, and again, on the expense side, you know. While we have good news on the pensions, I, I would be remiss if I didn't call your attention to the bad news for the debt service. You know, that's a, a big number there, that 447 at the bottom that we no longer have equity to fund. So, you know, we, we get some good news each year about that for the, the pensions, and I did, you know, group that together with the employees because, again, it is an employee-related, so I drew that, that to your attention. But the bottom line number there, that's the, that's a pretty big number as well. You know, we have to pay our debt service. It's not like there's an option there. So, again, if we're ending up looking for a cut, we're, we're looking at service levels because there's no other good news or, you know, shake the money tree and hope something falls out. Again, it's early. You know, we don't have estimates from FPL. We don't have estimates from the state. We don't have estimates from the property appraiser. We've all, you know, put our collective heads together and thrown a Throwing a dart at the board. I think, and the last thing we want, uh, the first time we really talked about any of this was in July, the last year. Correct. Yeah. Getting our arms around this early is the right thing to do. Well, so, so, want to join this conversation? And setting expectations. We have to. Well, hold on. Yeah. Let, Chase wants to finish a thought. No, just my apologies. No, that's all right. Um, just to clarify and be clear, uh, I just I want to start a point. That's what I'm looking at. That's why I'm asking for that. You know. And, and Scott's mentioned this numerous times in discussion wisely as well, uh, that if you're going to add stuff and people are, are educated as to what is being added and they're wanting it, then they're willing to pony up and go for it. And that's what I want to start at, where, we, where we're at from last year and what, we, what we're going to spend this year. And then we decide, of course, as a council, okay, we, we don't want, but we're asking staff to bring back budgets based on specific numbers. So I'm asking for that number as well. For the, for the starting point of education first. To do what we did last year, you're looking at 37 more? Mm -hmm. To do what we did last year. Which is not what rollback is. Rollback would be less than that. Mm -hmm. What we did last year costs a different number from what it's going to cost next year. Well, plus, plus what we, we agree, as you had mentioned, we agreed to a few things last year that we need to pay for this year. And we never have right. three labor contracts come up in the same year ever again. <laughs> I think that's. Oh, Jamie, Jamie's giving me a high five. I think we're good. <laughs> Scott, come on. 
on that note, that's, that's exactly what I was going to comment on. It, it would be great to say, I want my starting point to be whatever we spent last year. The reality of it is, is that the five of us have committed to things in future years. And so our starting point has to be on our commitments, not what we spent last year. Because if our commitment is to maintain the level of services, maintain the quality of life, and, and maintain and, and honor the commitments we have made in the coming budget year and actually the next, then that's your starting point. Because anything other than that, you're talking about cut. And I'm, okay, and I'm okay with talking about that. I'm okay with discussing that. And I certainly respect every person's opinion up here. And, and all those things should be discussed, no question. But I would agree with, with the mayor. The way it played out last year is not what I want to see. Um, we, we could all get some basic numbers and open up that budget book. And if you've got on your mind, hey, I want to cut 600000 or I want to cut 800000 or I want to cut a million, start looking for it and bring that to the dais and let us know. What do you want to cut? Yeah, Specifically, with what I don't want to do is talk about arbitrary numbers and then throw that in staff's lap unfairly. And then when they make the cuts, we don't like it. And that's what I, what I hope we don't get to this year. It's early. I really appreciate us getting started early for these very reasons that have all been spoke of tonight. This is productive. This is good. This will help us move forward. Um, I, I truly appreciate everybody's opinion. I think, you know, if we could put it all in the words, the five of us all probably have different perspectives, different priorities, different levels of what we would articulate as our, our, what we consider a quality community, what we consider the appropriate quality of life level, and all those different things. And so I appreciate that. And one of the things I am confident is that together with staff and the five of us, we will work through all of this and we will go through the pains and the celebrations. And at the end of the day, we will come up with a budget that will keep this city moving in a positive direction that will meet the expectations of the residents that invest in this community. Not spend, but invest. And that's where I think we'll end up. And I think this is a good starting point tonight. I think uh, the staff has given us some things to start considering. I know there'll be more to come. I know when numbers get more uh, defined, that's when the you know the rubber meets the road type of a thing, and then we'll have some hard decisions to make, and we'll make them, and uh, we'll make them collectively, and we may not all agree, but we'll, we'll keep things moving forward in a positive direction. So I, I appreciate the time staff is putting in now and earlier, and uh, I know I certainly have been given some stuff tonight to, to ponder, and it's really hard to see it right off the bat and then make hard decisions tonight. And, and Jake, you know, my commitment is to be able to give you and your staff, at least from my perspective, a much earlier uh, direction than I think uh, we've done in past years because I think that's fair. I think it gives you more time and allows for uh, staff to act more efficiently and appropriately moving forward to get the, the budget done. So. So from, from my perspective, I'll share with you that the five of you provide me budget direction early on every year I've been here. Uh, but I don't work for you. I work for the governing body. Uh, so, so that's what I need. I, I, I need you all here in the coming uh, weeks to provide the staff direction so, so we're, we're not, we don't, Live oh, like we can we get together last, anytime yeah. you need us to and argue some more with each other. And and so <laughs> so you can argue all you want. I just at the end of the day need compromise and direction. Um, can you while you're gathering will you also speak to what you feel is a is a good timeline that you will be able to get back to us with some relatively and I, and I hate to call Tracy too bad, but so some better numbers, revenue projection numbers. When when when, will, when do we think we'll see that at its earliest point? And also, once you're done talking to all of your department heads. So we, we did a warm fuzzy around June, June, June time frame, okay. but I don't want to wait that long to get together because. No, no I'm not suggesting that. I just want to know numbers. Yeah, so, yeah, so yeah, we'll stick to the budget calendar. Okay. Uh, if we need to add some stuff in there, uh, we, we can definitely do that. But um, um, you know, we, we can provide you with, with what, you, what you need in the meantime, as well as education. Uh, Councilman Ford brought something up a couple a couple weeks ago and again uh, tonight with the uh, with the different revenue issues going down. You got the half cent sales tax. You have the what is this um, you have the half cent sales tax, you have the uh, the the homestead exemption, 
we also uh, briefed you on uh, the, the fire assessment. Um, staff is going to have to spend some money to do some, uh, some in-depth look at, at where to go from here with that. Um, some have said, let's not, let's not look at it this year. I got the let's not make a decision on it this year. Uh, but if we don't start looking on it, at it this year, then we, we, we will be behind the eight ball when it comes time to execute, should you want to execute in the following year. So uh, that's something that you, you don't have to make that wait until at least this budget comes clearer into uh, No. We can, we can, but it'll put us at risk for next year. So instead of, should you all decide to do it, instead of filling the gap, it'll, it'll take a dip and then come back up, uh, hopefully equal. But, but I, I'm, I'm, the, the timeline, like with every other assessment we do, and this is a new one, uh, you have to back it up in order to do that. We need to, we need to get some people on it and, and and crunch some numbers and look at some look at some law and that's something that we don't have the capacity to do solely by ourselves right now. We can't take action on that tonight in a workshop anymore. Anyway. Nope, nope. I just want you to think about it. We can we can talk about it next okay. Tuesday or a couple of Tuesdays from now, but but it, it I'm gonna keep bringing it up until you tell me to shut up and don't talk about it anymore. <laughs> I can give you some feedback, at least from my perspective. We're talking about a 7% increase up here. We're talking about a half cent sales tax. What, what, what message are we sending to the citizens all at once? Are, we, are they gonna have battle fatigue by the time we're, you know, how many things? Uh, I get it, if you're, asking, them, if you're it. asking eight referendums for money, they're gonna say no to all of them. I, I'm, I'm not asking you for money, Councilman Ford, I'm just telling you what your options are because I don't want anybody to say, why didn't you tell us that we should have done that last year to get the money this year? I want to provide the facts to you. You all make the decision. I, I would rather chase it or not chase it, but I, I don't, I don't want to have to jump through any special hula hoops to get there uh, in a month's time. Yeah. What, yes, we can. I'm talking about assessing, mm -hmm. not, not doing the, the, all the... Uh, uh, not doing, doing all the announcements. Doing we're talking about what we're going to talk about. The process. The process is long for a new assessment. I'm not saying let's do it. I'm saying if you want to do it next year so there's no gap, I need to act now or soon. So. All right. Let's chew on that and then have yep. a discussion about next time we uh, can actually give you some direction. Uh, sure. In a council meeting. Any other comments? That being said, there's nothing else to say. Jake, when's the next time we're going to get together so we can yell at each other like this? Chris, you get the well, I have, calendar. I have a budget calendar. Um, the budget calendar calls for the finance to send out a draft CIP to the manager and council um, shortly, um, three months <coughs> after adoption, so that's actually due out. It's, as soon as we complete, we're on the 17th is the goal. Um, 17th April. Right. Uh, we will then open up the system for the departments to put in their requests um, on the 20th. Um, we'll be back. Excuse me? It closes on the 20th. It closes on the 20th. Okay. Thank you. I have my brain <laughs> back here that um, knows all that so well. Um, city manager is going to be reviewing the preliminary operating and capital budgets in the late June time frame, June 20th to 30th. And we would, um, you would be giving us guidance in the beginning of July, and a preliminary proposed budget will go to the manager July 6th, and we are scheduled for a workshop on July 14th. That's when we're in the meet to it, and that's where there are more detail and more numbers are coming together. Gotcha. Mid July. And I know you'll be feeding us a lot of information between now and then anyway. Let's try to jam something in toward the end of May. I'd like that. Are we amenable to that? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Very good. With that, have a good night. Thanks.